All right, hello. Today we are starting 5.1.2. We are going to spend two days on this lesson, so we're going to get a little bit uh, through it here today, and then we'll finish up tomorrow. I should be back tomorrow. So uh, today we are continuing what we started last week with the inverses, but we are looking at this in terms of graphs, which we didn't really get to at all uh, on Friday. So uh, similar to the videos we did uh, a few months ago, uh, I will have you pause it at times uh, for you to try to just work through some of these problems uh, and things like that. So uh, I will have you pause. You can go ahead and read through this. I'm not going to take the time in the video to read through uh, kind of the introduction or uh, the start of 5-16. Uh, uh, so pause it here, uh, read through that quick, and then uh, we'll pick it up here in 5-16 in just a second. So here in 5-16, uh, we started looking at these inverse functions. And so we have three functions here. Uh, we have a linear, we have a quadratic, we have a cubic function. Uh, and so we looked at last week being able to solve these inverses um, with the equations and being able to kind of undo uh, and work backwards. And so uh, look back at your notes if you need to. Today we are looking at in terms of a graph. So I'll do this first one here with you and then again I'll have you kind of pause. Uh, so with the graphs, we want to start by making our x and f of x functions. We're gonna make a little table here, okay? And so let's do all four points that they have here. So uh, if I work left to right, I have negative 6 as an x, my f of x is 0. If I have x equals negative 4, my f of x is 1. Okay. If I have my x equals 0, my f of x or y is 3. And lastly, 2, we're at 4. And if we plugged all these into our equation, we should have true statements as well. Now, remember when we did the inverse, and we did this some last week as well, we switch our x and y. So in our inverse, we have now, we are just going to swap each of these. So then my x's become 0, 1, 3, and 4, and my f of x's become negative 6, negative 4, 0, and 2. So when we graph this, we have the point 0, negative 6, we have the point 1, negative 4, we have the point 3, 1, 2, 3, 0, and we have the point 4, 2. And when I connect this, we should have a line that goes through each of those and looks about like this. Okay, so this is my F inverse of x. So I want you to try these other two on your own where you are graphing the inverse of these. So I'll give you a second to do so. So again with these we're creating tables. We have our x, we have our f of x, or really I guess our y's here. Okay. We're going to look at again four different points. We have the point negative four, one, two, three, four, five, six, negative three, one, two, negative three, our vertex at negative two, negative six, and we have a point at zero, six. And then again for our inverse, we're just switching all of these. So for our inverse, x, f of x, we have 6, negative 4, negative 3, negative 3, negative 6, negative 2, 6, and 0. So when we graph this one, uh, 6, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 3, negative 3, oops, negative 3, negative 3. negative six, negative two, and six, zero. And we have our parabola that looks like this. 
Again, this is our inverse function. And our last one, our cubic, same idea. We got lots of points here, but it shouldn't be too difficult for us. Boom, 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 boom. All right, so we have our x and f of x table. We have negative 4, 0, negative 3, 4, negative 2, 5, negative 1, 4, 0, 2, 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 3, 0, and 4, 4. And then I'm going to try to squeeze it here. We're just going to flip all of these. So then when I do my inverse, I squeeze these, x and f of x, we're just swapping, right? So we have 0, negative 4, 4, negative 3, so on and so forth. And we're just graphing them all. So we have 0, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, 2, 3, 5, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, So now my graph looks like this. So those are how we just graphed each of our inverses. So we just did letter A, we made the inverse for each of these. So letter B then says, make statements about the relationships between the coordinates of a function and the coordinates of an inverse. Use x, y tables of the function and its inverse to show what you mean. So here we have our x and y values switch, which we already knew, right? In a table for a function and table for its inverse. And that's just the switching we did, okay? So take a minute, look at 16, make sure it makes sense, okay? Now, in 17, we're going to still kind of use these functions here, okay? It says we want to draw a line of symmetry, okay? Or where could we fold this, and it would be uh, the same, okay? And this is a little bit hard to see, okay? So here, if I go back, I'm going to draw my lines of symmetry just in purple here, okay? My line of symmetry is going to be right here. Same for this one. Uh, actually, I'll zoom in. Uh, we'll do it this way. So here is my line of symmetry. It's right through here. Same for this one. Right through here. And this one. And again, this can be a little bit challenging to see. Okay. But what we are going to realize here in letter B, and I'll have you pause here before I tell you the answer of what is the equation of that line. And the line that you should get is y equals x. Okay, This is a linear line, a slope of 1, and a y-intercept of 0. And so why do you think this line makes sense as our line of symmetry? This makes sense because our x and y values have switched in our function and its inverse. So this line of symmetry is here to be able to try to kind of help us shortcut this in some aspects as well. So 
We're going to skip over 518. We aren't going to do that one here today. But I want to show you how to do this on a graphing calculator. Or really, we are going to look on Desmos. Okay. So for Desmos, I'm going to look at the 5-16 problems. Okay. So I'm going to switch over to Desmos here. Uh, and what you see here, okay, with this first one, this is exactly from 5-16, the y equals 0.5x plus 3, okay? So what we are trying to do is be able to write the inverse for this. And so there's a couple different ways that we can do this, okay? The kind of shortcut way is this. We want to say that f which I have to go here to here, f of y is equal to x. And did I do that right? No, I need to say, sorry, f of x is equal to y. No, oh, that's not right either. All right, I'll tell you the other way then. Okay, so what we have here is this, okay? We have our y equals this. Now, what we have talked about is we want to switch these lines or switch our x and y. So we can actually do that right in our equation. We can say x equals 0.5y plus 3. And notice that this line that we just drew here, which I'm going to switch the color. I do that is the same as our inverse. Okay? I'll do it here in, in the other one as well. If I go y equals 3 with my per, uh, parabola, x plus 2 squared minus 6, there's my parabola. Again, I can switch it. So instead of y, I have x equals 3 parentheses, now y plus 2 squared minus 6. And again, that should be exactly as the one that we graphed above. And lastly, my cubic function, a little bit weirder here, but the same rules apply. If I go 1, 6, x, and I have to go to my functions here. Uh, not there. There we go. To the third, minus 13, 6, x, plus 2 is that original function. And again, we can write the inverse by just switching it. So x equals 1, 6, y cubed, minus 13, 6, y plus 2, and there is that inverse as well. So that is as far as we are getting today. Go ahead and look on homework assignment to do those problems. I don't have that right here in front of me, but your homework problems on Schoology. And we'll pick up here after or on tomorrow uh, to finish up. Lesson 5.1.2.